In this Sunday's Gospel from the fourth chapter of St. Mark, Jesus responds to opposition that he faced as he began his ministry in Capernaum along the Sea of Galilee. Scribes from Jerusalem had come, and they were, of course, the smart people of the day, and they said he had a devil to keep away from him. He also faced opposition from his own family who came down from Nazareth to take him home. They, they thought he was out of his mind, so even people close to him did not receive him. Jesus' response to opposition is the parable of the sower. Now, the first thing to notice about the parable of the sower is that God is the sower of seed. God looks at the world as a place where he wants life and beauty to be. God is the great sower who bestrides the world, sowing seed, seeds of life of every kind that grow mysteriously and surprisingly. The seeds bring life, not death. The God Jesus describes in the parable of the sower is the same God the book of Genesis describes as the creator. God creates a magnificent world that's completed by a garden with trees and plants of every kind. God places Adam and Eve there. And even though they're banished from that garden because of their disobedience, they're given a promise of return. This will again be a garden for them. Jesus is the sower who comes to fulfill that promise and he brings new life to our world. Jesus told the parable of the sower at the Sea of Galilee, looking out at the rich farmland surrounding that sea. It was rich there and, and then, and it's rich now as farmland. People who, who we spoke to fished the sea and farmed the land. They, they knew firsthand how seed was scattered and how it grew. They knew that the soil, the weather, the environment play a part in the seed's growth. They know also that people could spoil their fields and their crops, but every year they counted on a harvest. So it was, it was bound to come. Now today, as we hear the parable of the sower, we're, we're looking at a, a world of another kind, aren't we? Our world is not as optimistic as the world that once heard Jesus. As some of the smart people of our time, I'm thinking of people like the eminent scientist Stephen Hawkins, who died not long ago. They see that maybe this world will not exist anymore. Our world is, is headed for extinction, they say. So let's look for another planet to survive on. And there are others who don't want to acknowledge that there's a danger here and, and at, at, at this time, that it can't be that bad, they say. But we know that our environment, which nourishes the seeds of life, is endangered now. Pope Francis spoke of that danger in his encyclical Laudato Si. The dangers come not just from the usual factors like rain or rocky soil, or ordinary storms that our parable speaks of, our world is in danger now from human carelessness and human neglect. God is the sower. We believe God, the creator of heaven and earth, still sows seeds of all kinds. God still loves our world, and that gives us great hope. But we're the ones, more than ever, who need to take care of our world. In the book of Genesis, you may remember, Adam, after the fall, hid in the garden, unwilling to face the God of life. Where are you? God said to him. Where are you? God says to us. Where are you to take care of the seed that's sown, the beautiful garden I wish to plant and to nourish? We have a very important job to do, and this parable tells us that. 